Hello. Hey, everybody. Great to see all of you in the chat. Hello to all the members as well who've joined the channel. Thank you for doing that. Thank you so much to my mods. We are going to have a busy, busy morning. Dip Me in Glitter is here. Nancy's here. And I believe my Tony is here as well. Thank you guys so much for your help. Everybody, as we go along, if you got a question, put question in all caps in front of it. And uh, we will try and get to as many those as many of those as we can as we go along here. I'm Natalie, and this is Scientology Life After a Cult, where we talk about the news that has the internet buzzing when it comes to Scientology. I also talk about my 35 years in Scientology and leaving with three generations of my family. And let's not forget interviews throughout the week with different people in the community, people who are protesting, live streaming, ex-Scientologists. So when you do hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell too, because you may very well just get a notification to let you know when I go live. And for the interviews, those are not always at a set time. So you want to keep an eye on that bell and keep an eye on that subscribe button. So wonderful to see everybody. And we have got a lot to get into. So we're going to jump right into it. Let's see. Let's start with Oh my gosh, the fun, you guys. There's so much going on this weekend for Scientology protests. It's a big, it's a big weekend for multiple reasons. Let's just do a, cl a quick review of why and why we're going to see so many of these uh, clips of protesting. Because it is yesterday was the day that most organizations in Scientology saw the L. Ron Hubbard birthday event that occurred earlier in the month. It is one of Scientology's largest propaganda events, their biggest propaganda event. People show up to just like, give me the propaganda. <laughs> Tell me things that make me feel better about all the money that I'm giving over. Tell me things that are going to make me feel better about the fact that I disconnected from my family. That is exactly what these events are about. They're also an opportunity to sell to the flock the newly released materials of Scientology, which are usually old materials rehashed and repackaged and sold as something else. <laughs> that was happening. It is also Easter weekend. And uh, today, if you're catching this live, happy Easter. It is Easter Sunday. Great to spend. That's why we're going a little early today, because I'm going to be off to brunch in a little bit. So for those in multiple reasons, lots going on this weekend with Scientology protests. I'm already looking forward to tomorrow's recap, to be honest, <laughs> because there's already stuff I know that's going to happen today that we are going to be talking about and all over the place, too. We're going to pop in in Canada. Jeff over at PTS for Life did a whole I, I got, I think, two or three clips just from him alone. Uh, people were sending me so much about that. And I watched a lot of it. And, and he and the other people protesting there did a great job. Let's take a look at uh, Chi Chicana did a video to kind of kick things off. Kick it off here. Get us in the Scientology protesting mood spirit, right? Especially on a holiday weekend here. Take a look at this. This is from Chi Chicana. So you've gone over. Well, you can skip that bridge. Happy Muster Sunday. Get out there. And especially if you're in the Los Angeles area, I think a lot is going to be happening in, in terms of protest there today. That was a ton of fun. And if you didn't catch it, she even worked in the clear cognition, which in Scientology, you pay upwards of $100,000 to get to that level where you get to realize that, wait, what? I've been creating my own reactive mind. You know what? I am not going to do it anymore. <laughs> I love how she got that worked in there. It was great. Utology. We have shared multiple video clips from Utology, who just keeps bringing it with the humor and with the songs, and sometimes it's like a really serious look at it. Sometimes it's more levity, and this one is definitely more levity. I'm just going to share a clip of this, but you got to go see the whole video. Links down below to everything we're talking about because it's hilarious. It, it goes, it tells this whole story and narrative. I'm going to share a tiny clip, but you guys got to go watch it later. The person looks strangely yellow. Duckies in the house. He somehow reminds me of duckies. Scientology I wonder if this is the solution to the riddle. 
That's hilarious. That's beautiful. I'll show you what happened three days ago. Oh, my God. La, la, la. A reliable anonymous source sent me this video. Huh? Okay, I don't want to show his license plate, because I don't know if he shows that. But we're just going to fly the entire car with little duckies. <laughs> See? We're going to do the whole thing, okay? We got thousands of ducks here. Oh, no, that voice gives me goosebumps. She uses her magic powers to cast a spell on the owner of the car. Keep it public, what the hell? Okay, okay, that little line right here. Many magical duckies are used by this person. <laughs> and if you saw the videos originally that these come from, you might find it even funnier. Uh, I think that was Confident Chris's car with the duckies, right? Anyways, you got to see the whole video. It tells the whole story. It is a lot of fun. Utology is hilarious. And I'm getting more curious and curious as to who Utology is. I would love to hear Natalie at lifeafteracult.com. Utology, if we have connected, my apologies, because sometimes on YouTube, people have a name and then email, they have a different name. And sometimes they sign the email with an even different name. So for me, it's all like this. It's hard to, uh, to always keep track. So if we did, my apologies for not remembering exactly and connecting the dots, but would love to, uh, I want to find out just like what inspires you to do this, all that good stuff. So reach out if you can. Now there was, oh, this was such a, uh, you know, we get those, those videos, those topics that need to be talked about and covered when it comes to Scientology and they are mortifying, but it needs to be said. And growing up in Scientology, Aaron Smith Levin and literally Serge did a video talking about children in auditing in Scientology, in the C organization as well, and the young ages where children start Scientology auditing and what that means and what that looks like. I'm just going to share a snippet of this, but as per usual, I recommend you go watch the entire video. This was very impactful. It is very eye-opening, not just for people who are outsiders of Scientology, who've never been in Scientology, which are most people who are watching this, right? The never ends, never in Scientology, but all in on bringing down the cult. It is an eye opener for people who grew up in Scientology, who were in Scientology and left even because so much of what happened and happens in Scientology, you don't recognize as being abusive or inappropriate due to the indoctrination and training that we go through as children. And it's just real, really eye-opening to see it in this light. And I'm so glad they did this video, even though it is difficult to watch. I'm just going to share a little snippet. And uh, later on, when you have a chance, go watch the video. Includes, potentially includes, and even likely includes, discussions of sexual subjects. Yeah. No matter what. And it doesn't matter if you're receiving the auditing or giving the auditing. Just... There's steps to begin an auditing session, to set up an auditing session that always have the potential to get into some sort of age inappropriate um, sexual conversation. And that is why it really should be absolutely illegal to have minors, to have kids trained as Scientology auditors. And it should be illegal to have kids receiving Scientology auditing. I mean, it really should includes potentially includes and even likely includes they really go in depth give examples share a video of a young girl and i i totally forgot about those what do you do drills that's what they were called in scientology you had to go do a what do you do drill because you get this book and then you have the coach who in the video they share is the child because that's appropriate right and you, the coach will ask the question, this scenario happens, what do you do? And then the student, the person training to be a Scientology auditor, then would have to give the exact answer. If they don't, flunk, they're showed what the correct answer is. They might need to restudy something, look up a misunderstood word. They get asked the question again. So it's over and over again. This is the scenario. What do you do? What do you do? So that your responses become second nature. It's muscle memory pretty much at that point in how you respond to these questions in Scientology. And it's a big part of the indoctrination is making it that second nature way of doing it so that it seems, no, this is perfectly normal to do. They do it over and over and over again. And with children, and I agree 100% with what they said, what they're saying, children have no place in Scientology auditing, delivering it or receiving it 
for the reasons that they discuss in the video and the places that it can go and does. And I'll tell you, as a, as an ex-Scientologist, a lot of it, I didn't see that way because we were we we grew up believing we weren't children. We were big beings and little bodies. So why wouldn't we be expected to talk about topics that are completely inappropriate or have things said to us that are completely inappropriate? So definitely got we just got to keep ringing the bell about that and raising awareness about it and making sure people know about it and understand this is why we're so passionate about children in Scientology and the fact that they cannot consent. Now down the rabbit hole news. I love Rabbit and her take. Oh, I love it when she covers Scientology. And what was so interesting to me about this, when I'm watching this video, so this is a video she did in reaction to the recent blog article by Stephanie Hutchison, who is a board member for the Aftermath Foundation, where she basically, it, it's a hate piece written about Aaron Smith Levin. <clears throat> It speaks of the good works of um, Apostate Alex in the UK, which could have been done all by itself. This piece, not only, it didn't do Apostate Alex any favors, and it definitely didn't do the Aftermath Foundation any favors. And the continuing reactions and amount of videos and links and everything that are being sent to me, I know that you guys are definitely still still talking about and still processing all of this, I would say. But it was interesting to watch Rabbit, who in real time was realizing some things, including figuring out that Stephanie Hutchinson, remember the board member, the new board member for the Aftermath Foundation, was actually trolling her on Twitter. Pretty stupid. Uh, Marisa, her name is Marisa. The Dianetics? Yes. Is it Marisa or Manisa? I think it's Marisa. We'll find out. She tells her name here in a little bit. Um, I didn't know that one of the board members ran this page. So back when I was covering the AA Ron stuff, and actually I think I saw it more when I was covering the uh, uh, Miriam, you know, helping Miriam tell her story. I didn't know that this account belonged to somebody that, is now on the foundation. And she's talking about a Twitter account. And it was this Twitter account that was trolling and harassing her and where she went on to see some really hateful things being tweeted about Aaron Smith Levin of growing up in Scientology and his family. So this account was like trolling me heavy and tagging me on stuff. Listen, when people troll me on, uh, on, on, social media, especially like, tw I don't go back and forth on Twitter. I really, really don't. Um, I get tagged on a lot of stuff on Twitter and I don't go back. Very rarely do I answer, especially Twitter, because Twitter is a whole different uh, monster when it comes to this. So this account was like tagging me on shit. And I'm like, well, I don't know this account. And I'm finding out that it's actually the account that belongs to the lady on the board by the name of Stephanie. Yeah, I listen, I didn't know she was like so. Twitter is insane. Uh, Twitter is insane. I, you know, I have my Twitter account. I'll, I'll retweet the lives. I, I just started going live on Twitter. Uh, but this specific person was like tagging me. And I was like, who is this account? And then I was hearing, it's hers, right? Then I, when I went to go hear what Aaron was saying, Aaron was saying, well, it's this account called, uh, what is, what the fuck is it? Uh, Ulto Vera Veritas or whatever the hell, you know, so she goes on to talk about the account and some of the hateful tweets that were done, not realizing that that was the account that was trolling her before. And it's just very, it just really paints an unflattering, but truthful and obvious picture of what's happening with that. Uh, John's asking, is Rabbit a never in? That is correct. She's never been in Scientology. She has been a voice and advocate and a real voice of reason in many ways, a huge victim's advocate not just with with the ex-Scientology community, but all over the place. So uh, I put a link down below to her video, but it was an interesting response. I found it very interesting and how watching her put the pieces together in real time is really interesting as well to see. It just gets more disturbing and disturbing than when you just kind of like literally go down the rabbit hole with her and go, wait a minute, what, what? And there were quite a few responses done in regard to this blog article that was done. And we're going to take a look at, I believe it's Ono Nora who chimed in as well. 
So let's hop over and take a peek. As I cannot tell you the devastating physical and mental effects of having lived through all of that. Okay. It is beyond description. I am in massive amounts of therapy right now to deal with it. I have recurring night terrors. It, my body still has broken bones in it from the RPF. Okay. So frankly, to have one of us who lived an entirely different life, being born in, shoved into things, all of that, and, and say that we're observing a person who is trying to make their shit sound as bad as what we went through in some ways. Alex isn't the only or first person to have done this, <laughs> okay? Um, it is aggravating because the one thing that we all wish is that nobody ever went through this. And that's why we're so adamant about making us the last generation in there. We don't want any more kids in there. We don't want anybody else to go through this. I cannot overemphasize that. Okay. So, you know, more about jealousy and it's not the first time, you know, it's past time for people to stop holding Aaron Smith Levin up as some kind of saint who has suffered at the hands of everyone around him. Trust me. I've known Aaron for 30 years. He ain't no saint. He also isn't the devil. So let's stop trying to make that shit happen. <laughs> That part to me was really funny because if you really like know people in the community as we get to know each other, right? It it's uh it just just is just not the situation. It makes me laugh. I think uh I have not talked to Aaron about that specifically, but the whole godlike thing is I think really hilarious. Holding him up as whatever. That is so not a thing. That's so not a thing. Now, Kelly Copter also did a video and a response link down below to all of these. They're just really interesting. And it speaks to the, if you watch these, there's an underlying kind of theme and consistency in it. And that is a lack of truth and, and transparency and moving away from, we often talk about, and I hear a lot from you guys, there's, there's kind of two you, there's two ways of looking at it. Some people feel like, oh, they're just not comfortable with what they consider to be fighting. It's not, it's not fighting. There's some calling out. And when things aren't right or not okay or being misrepresented, then that gets called out. There's a responsibility when you put something out into the world, especially on the internet, that people are going to have opinions about it. So there is an unrealistic expectation to think that you could put out something as Stephanie did with this blog post, especially as a board member on the Aftermath Foundation, and not think that there's going to be any type of repercussion or opinions about it. And it just might take a while for that to kind of simmer down. Although it does seem that each time things kind of simmer down, boom, there is another article interview or something like that that kicks it all up again. So I don't know. At this point, <laughs> Uh, at this point, it seems almost intentional. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at Kelly. Kelly Copter is so creative. I'm just always amazed with her skills and ability to put videos and things together. Um, I'm really unfair because people are putting the work in. A lot of these people are never in um, and are trying to end the abuses of Scientology as well. So I don't get why we are now painting anyone as better. Um, Alex is doing good things here and uh, no one is disputing that. So yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to take some breaths throughout this video. guys. That's the interesting thing too is, and I've heard this, I've heard it from Kelly. I've heard it from Aaron. I don't know apostate Alex. I did, I've gotten a couple emails from people saying that I should invite him on. I did invite him on. I've not heard back and hopefully I'll hear back and he can, you know, give his, his, whether it's a side of the story or fill in some of the blanks, just kind of answer some questions maybe that people might have and uh, can help us better understand the situation. But I know one of the big things that is being taken issue with about this blog article, and it's something that I would agree with as well, that is incredibly not okay is to make less or paint people never in Scientology as somehow one, needing some type of go-between, 
between ex-Scientologists and people never in Scientology. You're all very intelligent people. If there's things you don't understand, you ask. We try to clarify a lot of the Scientology language that we use. There's no need for a go-between for that. And the other is invalidating people who've never been in Scientology, whether it's you at home or people who are protesting in minimizing the effect that they're having in exposing Scientology. That is something that many of us, and you'll hear that, you hear it with, oh no, Nora, Kelly Copter, you've heard me say it. That is not our point of view about it at all. We appreciate, see, and recognize the support of people never in Scientology. We would not be as far as we are right now without it and get as far as we're going to continue to get as well. Yesterday, I did an interview. William Goode was on the channel again, Scientology Audit Streets LA. Go ahead and check out that video if you get a chance because we kind of, we touch on that. But really, honestly, my favorite part of the video is he reacts to many streets. <laughs> He reacts to a couple of mini streets, including some mini streets, body thetans in Clearwater, those little uh, crocheted, crocheted, I don't know what else to call them, but puppets that Cheryl, uh, Farrell Cheryl has been making. So that is a great video to catch as well. We did that interview yesterday. But Kelly Copter's response as well down below, if you haven't seen it, check out the whole thing. And I think that you guys tell me in the comment, tell me in the chat. I'm in, under the assumption that you agree with me that people never in Scientology are having an incredible impact that should be minimized. I don't care if somebody's here just watching videos and clicking and liking and subscribing and joining the conversation. That is a huge contribution to this. It is raising awareness when you talk to each other about it. You talk to people outside of the internet when these videos are shared, all of that. That is what a grassroots movement is. That's, that's social media. That's YouTube. That's how these messages get out. And there seems to be a distinct lack of understanding that that's not going to happen if we only depend on the ex-Scientology community. Why? Because Scientology, for all of its scandals and devastation it has created across the planet, is a relatively small group of people, including ex-members. There are more ex-Scientologists than there are Scientologists currently. And if every Scientologist left Scientology, one, we probably wouldn't need, have to do this. But secondly, that still wouldn't be enough in terms of numbers to create true change when it comes to going to the IRS, our government officials, and questioning them on where do you stand on Scientology's tax-exempt status. They need to hear that over and over and over again from large numbers of people in the communities that they serve. That is why it is such a beautiful thing to have all of you in so many different places reaching out and asking these questions and contributing. I thank you. I appreciate you. And I know that the SPTV community does as well. Love that you're here. Keep up the good work. Definitely makes a huge difference. Now, Selfless Self was over at the Blue Buildings in Hollywood speaking to a man who's an ex-Scientologist that walked up to share his story. You really, it's another one where you just got to see the, I wish we could just, you know what I really wish we had time for? To sit here and watch all of these videos together <laughs> in their entirety. This is just a snippet of it, but go check out Selfless Self and you can hear, you can hear it in its entirety. Every minute of my time here, it was communication, communication, communication. I mean, they drill that, right? Smash it in here. I like to see some communication. I don't, I don't experience the communication. I I just one time, just go into this place and see how they talk to everyone in here. Oh, sure. It's like a sailor on acid. They are, there's <laughs> it's nothing but four-letter words. Oh, right, right, right. I cannot talk to you without shitting all over you. And I'll tell you right now, right into the camera, I don't, I'm, I'm not a believer in Mike Render at all. Oh, at all. Yeah. Because let me tell you something. You oh. saw the other guy, Rathburn, right? Oh, yeah. He only, he only, he, he had to leave just like Render because their heads were in the toilet. Absolutely. Their heads were in the Absolutely. toilet. Absolutely. Their heads were in the toilet. They were okay with this shit. I never would have done one evil thing to anybody, maybe right. myself. Correct. But not to anyone else. Interesting. Really great story. They have a really good conversation. So you definitely are going to want to check that out. Now let's go over to Vancouver where PTS for Life, Jeff was, and he was tearing it up, tearing it up. He had a couple of really great 
uh, conversations with Scientologists. And I'm telling you people, Scientologists are talking. <laughs> We're seeing this all over the place. If you give them a moment to respond and appro approach them with curiosity, it's becoming more common for Scientologists to actually start to have conversations with protesters. And I think that's a wonderful thing. There should be an exchange of that. They should also, as a Scientologist, be able to share their views and defend their stance or their religion. It gives them an opportunity. And sometimes when you're doing that as a Scientologist, you are trained to give the acceptable truth because you drill over and over and again. If you're, if somebody says this about Scientology, how do you answer it? It is so automatic to be able to do it that sometimes while you're doing it, and I'm saying this as someone who did it as a Scientologist, that while you're doing it, you're hearing it yourself and going, oh my God, I think these people actually have a point. <laughs> not always, not every time but enough. So I think these conversations are very valuable. I think every different way that people protest moves the needle forward. I'm not saying it needs to be done one specific way. I'm saying that I love that we're also seeing more of these conversations occur because let's be honest, people in Scientology, most of them are good people who have had their desire to help hijacked by propaganda and lies. And then it becomes threats of loss, their disconnection policy which as we saw yesterday on the recap, they lie about. There's no such thing as disconnection in Scientology. Really? <laughs> no, that is not true. So let's go take a look here. We got a couple of clips here from PTS for Life. Jeff was out. This was during L. Ron Hubbard's birthday event that was being held all over the place yesterday. And Jeff was in Vancouver. For those of you who are just joining, here's the sign. Here's little Davey hanging out. Little Davy of the fake Space Navy. We got Scientology destroys families through disconnection. Ask me how I know with pictures of me and my mom disconnected from 1996, 2009. And then uh, two months ago, disconnected from my dad because I was speaking out against Scientology. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Larry, PTS for life. Can you move over there? The sun's kind of behind you there. Disconnect from Scientology, not your family. Want out? Call the SPTV Foundation, my channel. Please make sure you're subscribed. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So then Jeff encounters, we've talked about this a ton, why so many Scientologists still smoke is just beyond me. But it's pretty much because Ellen Hubbard said that it does not give you cancer, that not smoking enough does. Completely insane, I know, but many of them, L. Ron Hubbard did it. So good enough for him, good enough for them. My goodness, man, long time no see. You still smoking, I see. That explains that cough. Do you smoke because L. Ron Hubbard said it was okay to smoke or? Wow. Litters. Litters, too. That's not very way to happiness. Oh, hey, Emily, how you doing? <laughs> Didn't recognize you unpleasant woman. Yeah, she's very unpleasant. He just threw what looked like a lit cigarette, I think into like towards a drain or something. Litter bug, litter bug, litter bug. And that surprises me because the couple of times that I've been to Canada, it really seems clean. And so if you see cigarette butts around Vancouver, it may very well be that guy at Scientology. <laughs> Jeff also had a conversation with a Scientologist speaking of, right? We were just talking about that. And it was eye-opening. It was eye-opening because like I keep saying, let them talk because they will often pretty much tell you everything you need to know and prove your point in the process and start off saying one thing, but realize like, oh wait, well, okay, maybe disconnection really is a thing. Anyways, you got to see this. Check this out. PTS for life in Vancouver. Cigarette into the storm drain. Trashy. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me make sure I've got, I think I got to speed it up just a little bit. Well, probably a little bit. Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> oh, just coming, folks. Oops. Is it? No. Hey, Lois. How's it going? Long time no see. How are you? Harland, spoke to your son lately? 
Oh my God! You don't recognize you. me. Hey, Harland. It's me. Live streaming. Anything that you want to say to the public? Well, have you talked to Hunter? Uh, but you've really gotten shorter, I've, or I've gotten taller. Well, probably a little both. Maybe a little bit of both. Have you talked to your son lately? No, I haven't. Never. No. Have you? I have not. No, not for many, many years. Yeah. Hey, look, it's CV Lash. He's um, uh, probably seems to be very out of calm, very isolated. Off. Yeah. And out of calm is out of communication. So in Scientology speak, that just means that that person's not communicating, not responding to communication. I got I got that sense for sure. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Well, who, you know who else is out of calm? My dad. Uh, yes. Yeah. He uh, he disconnected from me because I was making some videos on the Internet and uh, it was instant. He didn't even see them. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not the organization. Oh, absolutely it is. Handle and disconnect. Hear what he said? It's not the organization. That is the standard response to given Scientology. Oh, it's not the organization. Sometimes people choose, Scientologists will choose to cut out certain family members. <laughs> PTS, uh, PTS CS3. PTS CS3. Thanks, Steve. Nice try, though. Yeah, hey, buddy. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Other Scientologists were trying to get this guy to skedaddle and go inside, and he wasn't having it. He just kept kept going with the conversation, which is great. It's absolutely handle and disconnect. Come on, man. I, I know the policy. You know the policy. It's not 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 handle and handle or disconnect. Right. So so if I'm not willing to go through Scientology handlings, you have to disconnect. There is no one way or the other. That's just the way it works. Well. You can't be connected with a Scientologist. Hi, Anne. Thanks for not returning my phone call, by the way. So that's Anne Byrne over there. Scott yeah, Iverson. Anyways, like yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, Maybe you should reach out to your son. It's, uh, I, I actually oh, think... Tried, have you? Okay, that's too bad. Yeah, he went kind of off the rails, which is unfortunate. But I think the last time I talked to him, he was in Edmonton area. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same here. That's yeah. the last time I saw yeah. him. Well... Enjoy the event. Um, at the end, Dave Miscavige reads a poem, and um, Kaohsiung wins the birthday game. London wins for Continental, just so you're aware. So I don't mean to ruin everything for you, but I'm sure there's more surprises. He's going to talk a lot about Austin. However, it's not booming, so I wouldn't believe a word that this little guy here says. Little Captain Davy of the spa fake Space Navy. He's just realizing that he's looking at a doll of David Miscavige. <laughs> Look on his face. <laughs> it's kind of disappointing. Why is that? It's disappointing to see you. See the guy in the back by the door? He's holding the door open, trying to use his mind powers to get this gentleman to come in and stop talking. See me? In Why? This, you see me? The one at the door and the gentleman sitting down with the hat. I'm happy to see me. He's exercising his charter right to protest. We're in a free well, society. Nobody and we have every nobody right is arguing that, but it's just... Uh, it's not disappointing. It's just, Do you know how many Scientology abuses have come to light recently? How many... Scientology abuses have come to light lately? No, the amount know. of disconnection, people's families being broken up? You know. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Hi, Peter. Peace, brother. There's a... He tried to have a staring contest with me one time. <laughs> What OT level yet now? You were five, correct? So he was on operating Thetan level five on the bridge to total freedom. It goes up through operating Thetan level eight. And if I remember correctly, he does not answer the question. Have you gone up any further? Or? You can talk to me about your case because I don't really care. <laughs> no, I'd rather not. No. Do you have any body Thetans on you or are you just, you're pretty clear? Or? Come on. Clear them? Yeah. Come on, body Thetans. You know what body Thetans are. Uh, you know exactly what body things are. Interesting, though. He doesn't walk away. Not yet. Not yet. He does end up walking away. But he's staying even after body things are mentioned. And that's usually something that sends him running. Instead of that, he stands, he faces Jeff, and he gets his TRs in. His training routines come in. You can see it. And he's there for it. Deny it. Deny it on camera. Deny it. You, you know, you should really, really get your shit together. What's that? Oh, My body things? Manipulative now. Uh, anyway. Hey, Greg, are you uh, are you clear yet? 
Do you know the clear cognition is that you're uh, mocking up your own reactive mind? And all you have to do is stop doing it? Watch out for body thetans. Harlan, they're going to jump on you. <laughs> nice job, Jeff. But interesting conversation. He's trying to pull the whole, no, it's not disconnection. Like in the, you know, the organization doesn't enforce it. Really? Really? Mm, yeah, they do. And you know they do. So that's what I'm saying. Often when a Scientologist is put in a position of having to defend it and they're given the answer that they're trained to give when faced with a certain question about Scientology, it sometimes can have the opposite reaction, especially later on when they replay this in their head. Because let's be, let's be honest, you know they're going to. We all do it. We replay the conversations from the day to find all the ways that we said something stupid. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> But it's usually right before going to bed. <laughs> and I love that he shared the clear cognition as well. That's like, save them some money. Save them some money. All right, let's go over to Kansas City. Actually, a few things happened in Kansas City. We had um, Gypsy Mimi. Gypsy Mimi. Gypsy Mimi. I know this. We've talked about it. I think it's Gypsy Mimi. She was out there. She doesn't live stream. She'll video and she'll upload it. But Auditing Scientology has her on the live stream. And they were there in Kansas City together yesterday. Let's take a look at that. That was really interesting, too. I got a couple clips from Kansas City, actually. Same thing. L. Ron Hubbard birthday event going on. Here today. So we're actually letting a lot of people know about Scientology just by standing here. Yeah. Talking to Scientologists like those in the corner there, I'm sure, are Scientologists. Oh, the park, the park in the car? Yeah. Yeah, I think so they're trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, they're dropping someone off. Hey, guys, just out protesting Scientology today. Uh, <laughs> you're always, so you're always I do. <laughs> Scientology, this is the oh. Church of Scientology, Kansas City here. Oh and, oh, yes, I know you would have walked right by without even knowing it. You see, they got... Yeah, these, these guys didn't even know there was a cult in their neighborhood. Rooms up and every oh, weird yeah. stuff. And they, uh, they just... Oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Videos for online. They're having his birthday celebration today. Yeah, they'd seen videos online. And that's what I mean when we talk about word is getting out and people are learning about Scientology through social media. There are 2 billion people on YouTube. <laughs> 1,100 of them are here right now, which, by the way, hit that like button and check your subscribe button as well. Very, very interesting. And I love that when protesters are there, we'll take the time, too, to speak to the neighbors and find out, let them know what's happening there in their neighborhood. It, it just It's so impactful, those one-on-one -on -one conversations. There were more one-on-one -on -one conversations in Kansas City, and a fellow SPTV creator, Relatable Reese, was there. We have a little clip of her outside the Kansas City organization with her husband, Jeff. And they had, you got to go see the whole video, because she actually, the whole video's got great stuff in it. I just have a snippet of it when her and Jeff are out there speaking to this gentleman here. They also had a conversation with the mailman, but it is really interesting. Give this a listen. In there? Because she's even telling him like, hey, you're going to get in trouble. You're not supposed to be talking to me. I don't know if he is a new Scientologist, uh, the partner of somebody inside and doesn't quite realize what the deal is, but he's he's there for it. He's there for the whole thing. And there's a male voice, which I think is Reese's husband, Jeff, who chimes in. You don't think Maggie Kittinger is a mean person? What about Dan O'Connor? You think he's all right? I talked to him. I heard him before. No, no, I don't know any of these people really personally. No. He's a uh, practice. Twenty-five years ago, Dan O'Connor threw a fax machine at her and put her in the hospital. I was sixteen. He hit me over the head with a fax machine. Hit me in the face. But you know that's excusable when when you don't do your job. I think it's okay to hit people with fax machines, I suppose, when you're in the church. Back then they convinced her it was her own fault. You ever seen anybody get violent? You probably wouldn't tell me if you had, but. I mean, I'm telling you, I really have no connection to care. But no, I've never seen anybody violent. 
So he's saying he doesn't really have any connection or care to Scientology, but why is he there? I was on staff here. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's entirely different than what the general public sees. You think they're a little crazy or you think it's a cool cult? I mean, all religions are cults. If you're a part of a religion, you're a fool. I'm not by opinion anyways. They all treat the people the same way. Nobody gets paid, nobody gets to do anything. If you're a part of a religion, you work there, you just work in the his argument, oh, all religions are cults, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> yeah, really, it, it downplays what the actual issues are. And it's usually something somebody will say because they don't want to face or they're not maybe ready to face and understand. When we talk about Scientology being abusive, that is no joke. It is, there are so many instances of different types of abuse that are perpetuated within Scientology. And uh, you don't really see that over uh, in other religions as much. There are abuses, that's for sure, but uh, not the same thing, not the same thing. I'm pretty sure you can leave the Catholic Church and they're not going to hunt you down. <laughs> Last time I checked anyway, so I thought that was great. And how fun too, that her husband was there doing it with her and speaking up for her. I thought that was so great. Love that, love that. And that's over in Kansas City. Now let's jump over to Portland where Hey Carrie Ann has been. And there was some action happening yesterday. They also were having fun using some chalk. You got to love the chalk tech. You got to love it. Let's take a look at that. Again, this is over in Portland. This is from Hey Carrie Ann stream. Three older women, one in a wheelchair, on your chalk and cell phones. Oh, scary. Yep. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. Great chalk tech. They're getting a lot of positive responses when people walk by, people are, that are seeing that. So they're out there protesting. And I think at one point, because someone had said, oh, three women, one in a wheelchair with chalk and cell phones, armed with chalk and cell phones. So scandalous, so dangerous. Oh, be so afraid. That's a narrative that Scientology would like to paint. paint. But you know what? I don't know. Maybe sometimes people, we talked about yesterday, sometimes people have a fear of chalk. One of my kids does. My daughter does not like chalk. So maybe it's triggering to somebody in there. Likely, no. It's probably more all the stuff being said about the abuses and the lives lost in Scientology due to the abuse and practices of Scientology that they probably have a problem with and probably also why they called the cops, which they did. Except, hey, hey Carrie Ann was already out of there. She was in her car when that happened. But take a look. And a bunch of cops showing up. There's a bunch of cops out there. There were a good amount of police too. Can you see that? All those guys over there are cops. Yeah, Blue Media Scanner says disregard fire, but are you seeing all the cops? There's a bunch of cops showing up all of a sudden. Why are so many cops showing up all of a sudden? Bunch of them showed up. Sounds like there were some calls made to the police that were false about something that was happening there that, of course, was not. Was not happening. There is a whole vibe over there, and Scientology is just like, I feel like they're just not part of the whole Portland vibe. And uh, take a look at this, also in Portland. This is from Mike, Mike G5033. Just a, just a little like, you know, this is more the vibe with they're out there protesting. To protest Scientology, getting that SPTV logo out there. Absolutely love that. Now let's go over to Chicago. Nancy Drew is out there with some other protesters, wishing people a happy Easter. And she had a couple of interesting encounters that we are going to take a look at. Uh, one with an elderly staff member, which always, it just hugs at my heartstrings because I just worry that the elder abuse, again, Mike Brown here on YouTube has shared his mother Rosemary's story. And there was a lot to learn from that about how the elderly are treated in Scientology. 
Yeah, it's very tough, right? Yeah, they are. You have a great day. Happy Easter to you. She was having a rough time, and I didn't really want to bombard her with stuff. So, Yeah, the elderly woman stepped up on this large curb to get onto the sidewalk and, and almost fell over. I just, I just can't help but worry about her. You worry about the Scientologists in there, and then they go and do things like this, which was done to Nancy Drew cut somebody. Some people getting all up in her business, in her open bag. What were they doing? What were they doing? She should check and make sure they didn't put something in there, but check it out. Padlocks. They can't afford a shirt. Oh, there goes someone else. Can you get away from my belongings, please? Yes, this is my stuff. Yes. I don't appreciate that. My property. I'm standing right by it. So, yeah, it seems like he's in cahoots with the blue jacket guy. They're trying to steal my bag. Ford padlocks. They can't... Isn't that interesting? What are they doing? What are they doing lurking around an open bag? Definitely keep your bags locked up, closed up. I mean, honestly, anytime, let's be honest, right? But definitely when you're protesting Scientology, keep that locked up and closed up because let's be honest, Scientology has a sketchy history of trying to get people in trouble for things that they did not actually do. So you always want to keep an eye on that. Always got to keep your eye out. Now, Jay, Jay over De Denver Scientology Audit, he was out. He did a whole marathon of protesting. So please get over there and give him some love and check it out. We're going to share just a little clip of uh, they were like having a party out there. I think Jay's positiveness and fun and spirit might be rubbing off on the Scientologist because look what happened here. Now you got to watch under the tent. It's going to happen quickly, but you will see it under the white tent. <laughs> yes. Uh, feel free to hop up on the truck. Uh, they're not there anymore. We're going to have to see the VOD. Guys, did y'all see them dancing? Did y'all see that? They were dancing. Watch it again. And she just goes running back in. <laughs> you know, it's just so funny. <laughs> Maybe it is rubbing off. Maybe they want to come out and have some fun. How great would that be? I'm telling you. People join Scientology for different reasons in different ways. They are going to leave Scientology for different reasons and in different ways. For some, it's going to be something hitting them. It could be negative. It could be positive. It could be truth. It could be whatever. For some, it's going to be the humor. Trust me on that one. <laughs> Speaking of humor, St. Louis Scientology Audit. Louis, Louis Repetto, we've had him on the channel a couple times because he also happens to be a very highly trained Scientology interrogator from back in the day. And he spills all the tea about the confidential ways in which Scientology does their brainwashing. And he is in St. Louis. He was out there protesting. And he made a suppressive person declare on the back of, I think, a jacket for Elron. What is it? Elron Liar 91. Got him at his own suppressive person declare on the back of his hoodie. Take a look at this. I got you. You got a little. Nice. Do a little. Oh, you got the battery pack. I got you. Here, let me get a close up. That suppressive person declare L. Ron Liar. L. Ron was seen outside of the Church of Scientology on multiple occasions informing people of child abuse within the Sea Org. Elron was repeatedly held signs up that promote membership to a divergent group. Now, see, in Scientology, the ethics book, the high crimes, it even says in there divergent groups. Yeah, the word divergent. That's why I put that in there. 
Elrond has repeatedly held the sign signs up that promote membership to a divergent group, aka SPTV. LRH says anyone seeking to stop Scientology is insane. L. Ron is hereby declared a suppressive person. Hip, hip, hooray. L. Ron Liar 91 over there in St. Louis got his own suppressive person declared. <laughs> and isn't that interesting, always, the positioning of Scientology? If you, if you disagree with L. Ron Hubbard, if you're trying to stop Scientology, you're insane. You're psychotic. That's what they tell the members inside. So they're conditioned to believe that anyone who would protest Scientology is insane and psychotic. I mean, I will admit to having a few screws loose, but come on. <laughs> it's all this positioning to associate disagreement, questioning, or outright pushing back against Scientology or L. Ron Hubbard as being insane, psychotic, that's what they tell members inside about those of us who've left, especially if we were anybody who was respected in that community or came from a multi-generation Scientology family or actually did the Scientology bridge to total freedom. Because what are you going to say? What are you going to say? You think I don't know Scientology? I was in Scientology with three generations of my family. And I took a walk on your bridge to total freedom. And guess what? I found total freedom. Leaving Scientology. <laughs> so I guess in a way I got out what I intended to get out of Scientology. I just had to leave to do it. Who knew? Who knew? That's a secret sauce right there. You just got to leave and then you can have all the freedom that you want. Uh, John, I'm not positive we answered this, but Rabbit was never in Scientology. Bakes with butter. Is it a valid assumption that all who have been trained in auditing have been subjected to this graphic abuse? Yes, if you were talking about the what would you do or what do you do, the book with the with the kid in the video that literally Serge and Aaron from Growing Up in Scientology did, yes, ever since the golden age of tech training, this was David Miscavige's bright idea. We'll just make them repeat answers so they can just give these stock answers because there's only one correct answer when auditing somebody in Scientology. Free Zenu Project, I agree. Children should be protected from Scientology. That is telling in itself. How the hell they get away with it? Where is child protective services? In large part because the parents don't see it as being abusive. They see it as saving their children. They are proud of their children who become auditors in Scientology. That's like if, I mean, I, I guess I don't know for sure how people, if you're, if you're Catholic and you have a family member who becomes a nun or a priest, it's kind of, I, I would imagine it's like that. I've never had a family member become a nun or a priest. So I really don't have a point of reference for that. But tell me in the chat, tell me in the comments. When you are of a particular uh, religion or sect and someone, uh, you know, becomes a pastor, pastor or something like that, is that something that parents would be really excited about? I'd assume, but I, I now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm not sure. So tell me in the comments, tell me in the chat, tell me what you think about that. Corn freak. As a never in, I'm offended to possibly be represented this way. We, gen we, we, we genuine ones really are here with passion to help end this. Correct. And you're responding to the blog article that we were talking about earlier that Stephanie Hutchinson, who is a board member for the Aftermath Foundation, wrote. And we've been seeing responses to that. Wendy, Wendy McBath, if the Aftermath Foundation folds, Cult of Scientology, they can't just move on. Would they be required to move assets to a charity with similar purpose? Would there be any alternative to the SPTV Foundation? I'm not sure because I don't know how that works with the funds and things, but there should be multiple foundations and organizations lined up to help people leave Scientology. And let's be honest, all kinds of cults because they all, they often follow the same way, holding passports. You don't have a driver's license or a bank account or a credit card, things like that. There is no shortage of people to help, whether it's leaving Scientology or, like I was saying, other cults as well. Catherine Miller is asking, why is Stephanie trying to cause a feud between Aaron and Alex? Is this an OSA-like thing? <laughs> um, that's actually a serious and accurate question. I laugh because, um, honestly, with that whole thing, I mean, you know, it, no, I think she's doing it on her own with, with some other help and people behind the scenes who kind of maybe shared that agenda or thoughts or for whatever reason, 
have an issue with Aaron and you can have an issue with people, right? You don't have to like everybody. Everybody isn't everybody's best friend. That's just not how the world works as much as we might like it to be. It is okay to disagree. It is okay to support somebody and stand behind them in ways, but maybe still have disagreements. I felt that way about the Aftermath Foundation, the good work that they'd done in the past, but I also have disagreements with the way that it's been being run and decisions that were made specifically about how individuals were handled, namely the victims and people who were being helped to go out. The backlash and the pushback on this is so much because in that same blog, Stephanie writes about people who went to the Aftermath Foundation for help, which that should be confidential. And then she shares all this backstory about why their things didn't get approved and why it wasn't allowed and why it should not be. Where are you getting that information? That's information that should be between the survivor asking for help and the Aftermath Foundation. That should not be out there on somebody's blog or in another place like that. That leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. So, but to answer your, to that comment, no, I actually think they're doing it on their own. I don't think this is OSA. It's, OSA's not very effective these days. I mean, not that they don't do things. They do, right? They harass people. I'm not making less of that. I know that I've normalized it throughout my life. Aaron and I had a whole conversation and did a video where we touched on that, that we have normalized harassment from Scientology to the degree that things that really are harassment and not okay, we might look at it as like, eh, that's actually not that big a deal. And in part, it's not just because we normalized it growing up and, and having it be a normal part of Scientology, but when you are, whether it's on the internet or whether it's through blogs, whether it's through YouTube or different platforms, when you put yourself out there and you start having what can be difficult conversations that can create a variety of emotions within people, there and you and you reach a lot of people. They're going to some people that just don't like you, and that that's okay. That's just part of it. I don't think that we were all meant to, you know, just like absolutely enjoy every single person all of the time. <laughs> Erica M, thank you so much for, for becoming a member of the channel. I appreciate that support. If you're watching this on the phone and you have an iPhone, you can go on the channel. There's a drop down where it'll say two more links. If you click on that, it should show you, show you the join button for the channel. Bina, you would think they would treat Sea Org members better. Nope, crumbling cold. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. You would think like all the money that they have, all the money that they have in Scientology. Why don't we put it into the staff and taking care of them and helping them feel like, hey, maybe I can work the long hours because I'm actually getting something out of it where I'm not feeling abused. I'm not feeling taken advantage of. And we're not going to see that because Scientology is a cult started by L. Ron Hubbard, who is a cultist, who took things from other places, the things that work and are helpful in Scientology. And you'll hear this a lot. Well, when I first got in, I found it so helpful. It helped me in my business. I wondered what other ways it could help me. And it helped with me with communication. The new beginning things in Scientology, do have they do have helpful information in it. Because it was taken from other places, it's largely based on universal truths or things you can learn in psychology, in counseling, in other religions. It's just all out there. That's why those things help. But the further you go, the more twisted it becomes. And by then you've been subjected to a lot of mind control unknowingly. You become more isolated. You're encouraged that your friends should be Scientologists. You're encouraged that the people, you know, your my dentist was a Scientologist. When I left Scientology, I had to also find a new dentist. Danny, thank you so much. Great to see you there. Cannot wait to see you guys out today on Easter outside Big Blue or wherever you will all be protesting. Thank you so much, Danny. Let Oh, I got to get going. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Allie's mom, maybe LRH made up the whole pneumonia thing is to explain all the respiratory problems with Scientologists. That's right. It's all cover up for all the smoking that's going on. That's why you have lung issues and pneumonia, not because of body things and Xenu. <laughs> oh, I think you're right, Ellie's mom. I think you're right. Multiple just bizarre ways. Bizarre, bizarre. Scientology comes up with these bizarre ways of covering things up. I want to say thank you to everybody who made it 
early. I wonder, let me know in the chat and let me know in the comments. Did you get a notification today for this video? I'm curious, curious about that. Thank you for joining me earlier. I'm headed out to some family Easter fun. I hope you guys are doing the same. Yesterday, I did an interview with William Good, Scientology Audit, and uh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Check it out if you have a chance. It's on my channel. He, We did a reaction video to Mini Streets. I absolutely loved that. I loved it so much. And I think that you will too. I made a couple shorts from it as well. Thank you everybody who emails me, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com and shares links, articles, timestamps, clips. Just make sure when you send me a video that you include a timestamp and tell me what I'm looking at. Would appreciate it. Helps me go through it. Thank you guys all for that and your continued support so much. You keep showing up. I will keep showing up. I hope you guys all get out there and have an amazing cult-free day.